We're down on the Berg River um, Bank's security fence. Now, a lot of people aren't aware of how much wildlife we still have in this area. The trouble is the security fence, of course, is designed to keep humans out, but sometimes wildlife have a little bit of a problem with it as well. Occasionally, animals like porcupines will try and get through, and porcupines are phenomenal bur uh, burrowers. So they dig gaping great big holes through the security fence. And to overcome this, we've come up with a fairly uh, simple idea. We take a piece of water pipe, and this is a leftover cutoff from the development, and we use them as underpasses. Basically uh, giving the porcupines another option apart from digging. We uh, just watch, we monitor the porcupine movement and when we find a problem area, um, we go in and put in the pipes, put them under the fences and the porcupines soon learn to use them. If you have a look, you'll see these ones here are well uh, used. Now, some people ask me, well, how do I know it's porcupines? That's very, very simple from the spoor, from the tracks. Also, porcupines are incredibly strong animals. Not many animals can take this uh, wire and bend it uh, to the point of breaking. But certainly porcupines can with those massive, uh, those massive molars. The reason, of course, why the porcupines come through at this time of the year is very simple. Porcupines feed on bulbs. A lot of our geophytes at this stage of the uh, year are of course growing. We've had uh, fairly good rain, so they're much easier to find. Porcupines will then move out up into the bio corridor and other areas of the estate, and they'll look for Watsonias, for the irises, for the gladioli, and feed on the bulbs. So for them, it's a very important part of their movement. They live along the riverbank, of course, because that is very well vegetated and it's very quiet. Porcupines are predominantly nocturnal and they can move up to 20 kilometers a night. So if you are driving around the estate at night and you see what looks like a hairy ball in the middle of the road, it's probably a porcupine. They do get quite large as well. So don't be shocked, they're totally harmless. A lot of people are under the impression that porcupines shoot their quills. You hear all sorts of folk stories about it. Of course they don't. The quill is actually just modified hair and it's loosely embedded into the skin. If a porcupine is feeling cornered or in danger, all it does is it reverses into its attacker. But it does it so fast that the human eye can't see it. So basically people came up with this concept of a porcupine can shoot its quills. Not really fact. The fact that we've still got this, some of this amazing African wildlife in this area to me is phenomenal. I'm sure nobody wants to live in a sterile environment where there is nothing. So the little antelope we've still got, the porcupines, the mongooses, the genets are all important. They're important for the ecology of the estate to keep it healthy, but they also do an incredible amount of good. Sometimes I would admit a porcupine in the garden can't be all that pleasant, but it's only at certain times of the year, as I say, normally when the geophytes are, are uh, flowering. We'll uh, put in some more pipes, get free flow of um, porcupines, that way the porcupines are happy, security is happy, and that's the way it should be. Thanks very much for your time. If you enjoyed the video, please drop us a like. If you've got any comments, feel free to drop those as well. Mm -hmm.